Hey there, it's Dave Altavilla for Hot Hardware, and yes, these are Samsung's hot new Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge smartphones. It's hard not to jump right out of the gate with unbridled enthusiasm for these two Samsung devices, because really, they are pretty fantastic. Samsung has done away with the previous generation's plasticky build quality in favor of an all-aluminum chassis design, thankfully, that is strapped on the front and rear of both of the devices with Corning Gorilla Glass 4. This makes the phones very durable as well, though not indestructible as some torture tests on video have tried to suggest recently, especially for the Edge's double curved glass design, which by the way, we think looks totally killer. Regardless, the look and feel of both the GS6 and GS6 Edge is super premium, and some have even noted humorously that Samsung has managed to somehow out Apple Apple here. Compared to Samsung's previous generation Galaxy S5, the build quality is a major league move upscale, whether you consider their tight aluminum clad fit and finish or the upgrade Samsung offered with respect to the display from a 1080p Full HD 5.1 inch AMOLED display in the GS5 to a 2560 by 1440 QHD AMOLED display, again 5.1 inch, in the GS6 line. About the only downside to the new Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge designs would be that their 2550 milliamp hour batteries are now completely sealed off and are not user serviceable. The two models are nearly identical in size and weight, though the GS6 Edge definitely strikes a thinner pose in your hand or pocket. It's actually slightly easier to handle as well as a result of its curvaceous build. On the right edge, you'll find the power button and the standard GS6 has its SIM slot here. On the top, you'll find the GS6 Edge has its SIM tray located here, and both phones have a mic port and IR blaster for remote control functionality as well. On the left side, you'll find the volume rockers, while on back, you'll find the 16 megapixel rear-facing camera with optical image stabilization and an LED flash, as well as a BSI sensor for excellent low-light performance, which we'll show you shortly. And again, the whole affair is sheathed in Corning Gorilla Glass 4. These are the gorgeous black sapphire models that you're looking at here. The white pearl, gold platinum, and blue topaz versions are available as well. This glass casing does attract fingerprints, but it's not too much of a problem, especially with the lighter colors, which hide smudges better. Finally, on bottom, you'll find a rather iPhone-esque design with a headphone jack, a USB 2 port, another mic port, and the phone's speaker port. Incidentally, audio output and quality is much improved with the new GS6 over the previous model's rear-firing speaker. It's still just a smartphone speaker, and it doesn't quite catch HTC's boom sound front-firing dual stereo speakers, but both the GS6 and the GS6 Edge offer respectable internal speaker output for a smartphone. Moving right along with specs, both devices are built on Samsung's Octal-Core Exynos 7420 platform with Mali T760 MPA graphics and 3GB of system RAM. Both the GS6 and GS6 Edge come with either 3264 or 128GB of onboard flash storage, a 16 megapixel rear facing camera with optical image stabilization, a front facing 5 megapixel camera, along with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.1, NFC, and USB 2. Both phones are also super thin and light, weighing just 138 grams or just under 5 ounces, measuring 6.8 to 7 millimeters thick, with the GS6 Edge having an even more sleek and trim profile with its double contoured rounded edges on either side of its display. And speaking of displays, the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge have simply the two nicest smartphone displays on the market right now, in my opinion. Hands down, end of story, game over, victory Samsung on this round of flagship devices. We have no way to compare it to LG's upcoming G4 display, but LG will have a tall order to beat Samsung's gorgeous 2560 by 1440 QHD AMOLED goodness. Colors are vivid, balanced, with serious saturation. We tend to really enjoy Samsung's punchy AMOLED saturation levels here, though there is some personal preference involved. Regardless, these displays on these phones are super bright and can even be easily seen in outdoor settings. They're also very sharp and crisp with a ridiculous 577 ppi pixel density. And Samsung's Exynos platform has no problem rendering all those pixels fast 
Blast with Android Lollipop and Samsung's thankfully lighter, kinder, and gentler TouchWiz skin. Pouring on more accolades, the new Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge are very responsive, like noticeably more responsive than almost any previous generation Android phone we've tested to date. Perhaps it's the combination of the 3 gigabytes of RAM with Samsung's dual quad-core Exynos 7420 for 8 cores total, but everything just seems to snap, switch, and transition so fast. And again, TouchWiz doesn't seem to get in the way or bog things down at all. In fact, for me, TouchWiz tends to add better contrast and control in some areas versus stock lollipop, though this is highly subjective and just my personal opinion. The GS6 Edge tosses in a couple of additional features, which frankly aren't nearly enough to justify its $100 upcharge over the standard GS6 model. However, the Edge's display and design combination just look sexier, I think. It's an interesting design aesthetic that can fool you into thinking you're getting a wider view of the screen, though you're really not. It also sort of adds to the roll-in effect of swiping home screens and apps over from the edge of the display. There's just something a little cooler about the setup versus the plain old rectangle we're used to seeing in standard smartphone designs. Samsung also offers the People Edge app that allows you to keep tabs on feeds or notifications from your favorite contacts. To be honest, I probably wouldn't use it, though some social networking aficionados might. What I would definitely use, however, is the Edge Night Clock. I have long since tossed away my old-fashioned standard alarm clock. This adds a nice touch of being able to roll over and check the snooze status real easy. Just the thing for those mornings where you decide to catch up on a few bonus winks. Back to the topic of speed. Let's fire up the camera. Yeah, it's like that. You pick this phone up, tap it to do something, and it sprints to get it done. Chop chop. One word nimble. Samsung's camera app is also pretty nimble with standard easy to dial up settings like HDR mode and various effects, but honestly, you'll probably not be messing with things much beyond setting up your standard preference for resolutions and the like. It'll shoot 4K video if you let it too, because this phone takes some of the best still images you've seen from anything other than a DSLR. Yeah. It's that good. Still images are crisp, balanced, and vibrant. Low light performance offered some of the best results we've produced from a smartphone camera to date. However, what's most impressive about the GS6 and the GS6 Edge camera performance is how easy it is just to snap off great shots. Everything you see here was taken on default settings with very little effort. Video performance was also excellent with good image stabilization and quick autofocus response. Again, Samsung really nailed it with this smartphone, and the camera on board is really best of class for what's currently on the market with Android handsets. In terms of battery life, we found the GS6 offered competitive, though perhaps not top shelf uptime, that you'd get from a larger devices with 3000 milliamp hour plus batteries. However, the 2550 milliamp hour battery in the GS6 and the GS6 Edge did get the job done, offering about seven and a half to eight hours of connected web uptime in our browsing tests, and solid video playback longevity as well. And with wireless charging on board, as well as adaptive fast charging that can get you from zero to 50% in 30 minutes or less, the battery life picture gets even better. Another thing that's markedly better with the GS6 and the GS6 Edge versus the previous generation phone is the fingerprint reader. Though registering a new fingerprint identity can be tedious, once configured, the sensor is much more accurate at recognizing the right fingerprint more easily. I personally wouldn't be a big user of this feature, but for those who are, it's much more convenient now. In the benchmarks, the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge offered great results with very strong CPU throughput that just chewed through standard tests like Geekbench, earning top marks over any device we've tested to date. However, graphics performance as seen here in 3 Mark Ice Storm was slightly less robust, though still pretty strong. The GS6 team and Samsung's Exynos 7420 did fall short of the octal-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 chip with Adreno 430 graphics that's found in HTC's One M9, for example, but all told, the Galaxy S6 line has a very powerful processing engine and can handle virtually anything you'd throw 
about it with ease. So it's pretty safe to say that we really like the Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge here at Hot Hardware, so much so that both phones scored our Editor's Choice Award without even breaking a sweat. We have to tip our hats to the folks at Samsung for developing two flagship Android smartphones that look great and handle like a dream. You can pick up a Samsung Galaxy S6 for $199 on contract with all the major carriers or the S6 Edge for $299. You can hit the show notes below here for a couple of links on that, but be sure to stop by hothardware.com for our full review with all the benchmark details and analysis and thumb this video up if you liked it and subscribe to us here for additional reviews event coverage and our two and a half geeks webcast i'm dave altavilla for hothardware.com with the samsung galaxy s6 and s6 edge thanks for stopping by